So today we're going to go through some of the maintenance that I need to keep my boat running and make sure that I get back to the beach safely. Uh, it's con con there's quite a bit on the boat that needs to be maintained, some of it weekly, some of it daily. Without some of these modifications, like these bilge kills, or beach kills as some people call them, I'd never better get up the beach and down the beach. I also had to have the, uh, the skeg extended, so when I'm uh, pulling down the beach, it, it slides over the top of the trows and uh, pinches them down as we're going down the beach. And then obviously I've got a shackle, as you can see there, which is uh, hooked up onto the back of the machine. And that's what pulls us up and down the beach. The only problem I have sometimes is as we're going down the beach, uh, just going into the water, sometimes I get a few stones, as you can see there, clicked up on the skeg. And when I go to fire the, the engine up and go in reverse, sometimes you get a bit of a ping on the prop. Um, the prop has been on there for about four or five years. As you can see, it's starting to take a little bit of a effect on there now. There's a few little dinks in there. It won't be long before it's time for a, a replacement. So we're gonna check the condition of the rudder. Just make sure all the bolts are in place and all the locking tabs are still there. Well, probably an imp what I would say is an important part of the boat, obviously for lowering me down and pulling me up the beach. You need to check to make sure that there's there's no frays or any cuts in the in the rope because the last thing you want is this snapping when you're when you're pulling and people in the way. We also make sure that the painter is not as long as the boat. Because obviously when we throw the, the rope to the, be to the beach staff as we're landing and he misses and it washes back under the boat, it don't get trapped around the propeller. It's a bit wet and slippery at the moment, but it's not a sealed deck as such. So when it rains, we tend to get a lot of um, beads, line and uh, just general rubbish that go down into the bilges. And then if you're not careful, you can end up blocking up your bilge pumps. So I like to keep my rudder gear pretty greased up and uh, maintained. Make sure my hand bilge pump is working. Obviously there's, all, there's grease there for just lubricating. If my, rudder, if my rudder cable does tend to break, I've still got the emergency rudder at hand to steer the boat. What you need to do is make sure that you keep this maintained and topped up with white grease. And then every every time I go out, I just give it a couple of turns just to pump some grease down into the stern tube. And what I like to see is once I've done it, as I go outside, have a look at the prop, and you normally see a little bit of grease around the edge of the shaft. That lets me know there's plenty of grease being pumped in there. So this is the grease that I use for my stuffing box. It's a marine white grease. Uh, this this tin's lasted me about a year so far. It's it's not an, it's not expensive, but I wouldn't be without it. So really, you need to you need to check all your connections. Make sure you've got no no leaks or drips, especially on your fuel connectors. So the last thing you want is diesel wear your engine, diesel in your bilges. Then we've got the fan belt. This is a crucial part because obviously this runs the water pump. As you see my jabs go pump that runs off the engine so that's not a problem but on some of the older engines they've got a separate jabs go pump that runs off a, uh, a secondary belt on the jabs go pump as you can see there, there's six um, small little stainless steel screws there and then beyond that there's a paper gasket 
Uh, and then you need like a long nose pair of pliers to try and take out the impeller. But it's always advisable to have a couple of spare of these because over time they tend to crack and if they obviously if they get if they get dry or if you run the engine without water it can take off the blades and then obviously it affects your your um, the way the water gets pulled into the engine so it's always nice to have a couple of these on board but this is the only place really where the water comes in and lots of boats have been sunk because of poor maintenance of this stuffing box with the stuffing box obviously I'm on the beach and um, for me it's not, not a problem but when I go to sea you know, if I've replaced the, the material inside the stuffing box I need to spend 5-10 minutes adjusting it up so that when we're uh, when we're steaming along, I'm getting a couple of drops per minute. I don't want it to be bone dry, or it'd end up burning the material, and obviously would affect the gearbox, putting a lot of, lot of strain on the gear. This is the stuffing box material. This is what we use to uh, fit in the stuffing box. What we would normally do, we'd put it around the shaft, get it to where you want it, and then cut it into like a ring so this is just a just a shame so we, we cut it like that like that you'd make four of these and then when you put them on the shaft you'd stagger the joints so you'd stick the next one the joint would be this end next one would be this end and you just just so they're not in in line but this here is a is a graphite material with like a wax inside so once you put it inside then you start compressing the, the stuffing box this squeezes down and it, it uh, fills the gap between the shaft and the stuffing box and this gives you your seal this is an original Aislinn's beach boat as you can see from the hull it's got quite a flat belly on it so obviously when it's coming up the beach the uh, bilges or the kills don't don't dig in and it makes getting up and down the beach a lot easier but these these are some of the original boats in the yard then you've got the new fiberglass beach boat these were made from a mold from these old boats but the fiberglass one it's a lovely boat as you can see got a belly on it so it makes life up and down the beach so easy there's a big difference as you can see with this boat when I'm pulling it up and down the beach if I slide off the trows the uh, the kills tend to dig in and it can make it really awkward to get it up and down the beach <laughs> 